Hi everyone, this is Tracy Mitchell welcoming you back to Hitting Your Stride. Thanks for joining us today and a big shout out to all of the listeners tuning in via the Horse Media Group. With us on the podcast today is Dr. Steve Engel, who has been a practicing veterinarian since 1978. After graduating from Texas A&M University, Giga Maggie's, <laughs> he spent time in South Florida and Texas in equine practices. In 1991, Steve's best friend and mentor, Jim Kenny, introduced him to the concept of chiropractic medicine. Steve was educated for animal chiropractic at the Options for Animals Institute in 1995. And by 2006, he had decided to go solely into integrative medicine. This led to him in 2014, joining Equine Integrated Veterinary Solutions based in Brewster, New York. Dr. Engel remains actively involved in the care of the equine community's biggest stars in Florida and is also a dedicated husband to wife, U.S. show jumping legend, Margie Goldstein Engel, and her riding career. Welcome, Steve. How's Florida treating you these days? Are you keeping busy keeping Margie's horses in top competitive shape? Well, unfortunately, no. I experienced uh, a bit of an accident on week three of WEF for a horse flipped over on me and fractured my ankle. And so it kind of took me to the sidelines here for the, for the last eight weeks. So I'm edging back into it slowly, but it's slow. And the, the orthopedist said, I still have another month to go, but I am getting antsy as is Margie. And so I'm, <laughs> I, I do kind of sneak out to the barn and work on her horses in the morning when nobody else is watching, kind of going, when you come in, when you come in, when you come in, you know, and so it's, uh, I'm yeah. anxious, you know, yeah. I'm anxious to get back, but, but it's, a, it's beautiful down here, and I, I love being here this time of year. Oh, well, you're a busy man, and uh, very good at what you do, I guess, just to give maybe the listeners a little bit of a in, like you and I met, I think it was probably like 20 years ago, 21 years ago, <laughs> when, uh, I don't believe <laughs> Yeah, I know you came up from down south to work on some uh, clients up here and some of those clients were my clients so I had the, the pleasure to uh, show for you around for the day and learned so much from you and um, yeah, it was kind of fun we kind of play a game like okay Trace, what do you work on with this one and then the next one you'd be like don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of fun. I learned yeah, a lot I'm, from you. Yeah, and I'm still playing that game with you know, anybody who wants to come and visit and, and, you know, we all kind of look at them together and say, uh, you know, like discuss, how would you approach it? And, and I say, well, okay, this is how I approach it. And we enter into it and here we go. So yeah. yeah, it's a lot of fun. I love the interaction. I love, you know, sharing. I love that part of the, of what we, what we do. Yeah, sure. that, that, that is for sure. So doing what you do and what how you've evolved through all of this, you've, you've had a, a love of learning and, you know, educating yourself further in different aspects of equine care. Where does your desire to learn and your thirst for knowledge come from? Has it been something you've always had? Or did you get it from somewhere or someone? Uh I, I learned early in life that that I wasn't exceptional at anything. And so it needed to be, you know, I had to make more effort to be exceptional because I wanted to be exceptional, especially in sports and, and in my studies. And so um, my desire to, to learn kind of stemmed from, you know, just working a little harder at it, you know, and trying to be better than at it than you know what I would be happy with so uh you know from there it just kind of escalated into veterinary medicine and on to chiropractics and and just you know having my interest peaked and when I hit when I got into chiropractic it just exploded because all of a sudden I found something that I was really passionate about and wanted to explore every nook and cranny of it to understand how it worked and, and what it could do and you know were there any limitations and you know and just found that there was just so much creativity involved in this that that the sky really was the limit you know mm -hmm. and so it's just been a lot of fun 
Now, was this something like, was that desire to be better something that you grew up with in your family or was this something you just found with yourself, in yourself? Well, I think, you know, certainly it was something I kind of grew up with. I, you know, had friends that were all competitive. We, you know, like we were involved in sports. I swam, I played water polo, I wrestled. I, you know, did things where, you know, that, you know, the competitiveness, you know, like mediocrity was never rewarded. You had to be, you know, you had to excel. And so mm -hmm. it was, you know, that was instilled early in life for sure. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yes. Sort of uh, stilling good self-leadership. I've touched on that a couple of times, right? So yeah. learning, learning how to, to push yourself and go through those, those processes and try to be the best you can be. Sometimes it's not easy and it might be a little easier to kind of slide or coast, but you know. Well, it's you always to... easier to take, you know, yeah. to take that route, you know, to, you know, push yourself into that, you know, upper echelon, you know, take that path to a better place. Never is easy, you know, it's the climbing that mountain is the next step is gonna be just harder than the last. And yeah. it's just, you know, a continual climb yeah. for sure. And you keep, <laughs> I keep learning, you know, these horses teach me, you know, something every day, you know, and, and so it just doesn't stop and I don't want it to stop. So that's, it works. Nice. <laughs> All right. So you have a foundation in science, a very black and white world, but you've made groundbreaking strides in a touchy feely field <laughs> that had a lot of gray areas when you began in it. How were you able to balance the need for answers with the willingness to explore a new modality? Well, it really stems from the proof is in the pudding. You know, mm -hmm. when I started out with this stuff, the proof availed itself pretty rapidly as far as what manipulative techniques could accomplish. And that, you know, the changes that were made were they might not be scientific as far as being able to prove, but I mean, they were certainly blatant in that aspect of, of just seeing these animals change in their, in their behavior, in their physical uh, abilities, in their, you know, their range of motion, in their gates, and, you know, and just seeing them change. And, and it didn't take long to start witnessing these things, even, when I was starting out, when my techniques were, were, you know, minimal and, and elementary at best. And as time goes on, then, uh, and your techniques evolve and your touch evolves, then you, know, you witness incredible things. And yeah, so it's, it may not have started out science-based, but there's been a lot of work to make it science-based now. There's a lot of people out there doing research and, and, and giving it validity that maybe it didn't have off, right off the bat. So yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, now we might touch, touch on this a little bit um, in further questions, but did you have to like change your mindset towards what you were, learning to, to grasp, no pun intended, the feel of, of the chiropractic, you know, being very science-based, but like you said, it's, it's, there's science involved, but chiropractic and any of the body work is very much a feel. So was there a bit of an adjustment, again, no pun intended, but a bit of an adjustment in you and learning how to change that mindset? Well, for sure, because it, you know, and it, like you said, it evolves over time and it's, you know, there's that two aspects of it is one is the feel and two is understanding what you're going to accomplish and how you're affecting the spine and the nervous system and, and doing, you know, those kinds of things through manipulation. And so you have those two things going on as far as, you know, instilling function and understanding where it needs the function. And so yeah, they kind of go hand in hand, but the feel of it is amazing. You know, it's, it is, that's the driving forces. You know, and that's what got me hooked is I was introduced to doing uh, motion palpation. And, you know, a lot of those skills aren't really taught 
very well in vet school. And I think they are even less so now with the, with the advent of all these higher technologies where you know, there is less emphasis on the touchy feely part of veterinary medicine and more emphasis on the tech, you know, what does it look like on the screen type of medicine, you know, so okay. it's, it's changing. And for me, it's, it is all about the feel and, you know, what your fingers tell you and, and how they remember, you know, like, you know, just going over horses that that you might not remember the horse per se, but you walk, but you put, lay your hands on it and your hands say, oh yeah, I remember this, this mm -hmm. is different, you know, and it's, it, it is really unique. Yeah. Um, and it's unique too, when you, when you have the opportunity to work on horses over a long period of time, and when you really do get to know their body, I know sometimes when I'm massaging, it's almost like I could just close my eyes and let my hands kind of go where they feel the need to go. And it's a completely, I just sometimes just go on feel and the science pops into my head. I consider you know the anatomy and the physiology that's going on, but a lot of the time I just kind of go with the flow. Yeah, and, and uh, it's the same for me. It, it's all about the flow. It's, you know, you know, having a picture, you know, watching the horse move, you know, seeing where their weaknesses are, and then having, you know, developing a picture of where you want to take them, you know, and how, how to get there and, you know, incorporate that with the, with the problems that the rider is experiencing. And now how can I use my body to mimic what they're experiencing and then use that, you know, use my strengths to make that functional, you know, and, uh, you know, so it's, it is all touchy feely and it's going with, like you say, the flow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So can you talk a bit about the impact that your mentor and colleague, Jim Kenny made on you, both in terms of how you viewed veterinary medicine and treatments, but also in terms of how you viewed life in general? And why was that meeting and friendship so important for your own development? Uh, Jim is an extraordinary man. He's, he is a brilliant veterinarian and brilliant acupuncturist who does his, his main uh, mode is, is acupuncture and he does, you know, spot chiropractic over what his acupuncture tells him, as opposed to doing what I do is, you know, just a chiropractic exam uh, and responding to that. So Jim, was the first one to introduce me to motion palpation. And, and that just got me started. And every time we would see each other, he would show me a little bit more and, and things that I could play with. And it led me to a place where um, I wanted to put it to use, but really didn't know how to. And, and one of my associates had a lameness that, uh, that she felt pretty uh, clearly that it, she thought it was coming from the neck because she had, you know, done all the diagnostics from the foot to the shoulder, and you know she was not getting any readings there. And so she asked me to come take a look at it, and it was one of these, you know, little air mirrors that, you know, that she was, you know, two out of five lame and you know not very happy about it. But when you palpated her neck, her neck was definitely unhappy. And it was just doing motion palpation. And, and you don't always get audibles when you're working on these horses at all, you know, in, in fact, very seldom. But this particular horse, it audibly released in its neck. And when we took it out to see it trot up again, it was sound. And it was like, and the message couldn't have gotten any louder to say, you know, like, okay, sign up, get trained, start in. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and Jim has encouraged me, you know, every step of the way. And, and, you know, when I, when I felt like I'm not making progress, he said, you know, he just would kind of kick me in the pants and say, you're doing great. Just keep it up. You know, it'll come, it'll come, it'll come. And he was right. It just got better and better and better. And he's, he's been in my life 
you know, as my best friend, he was my best man. He was, <laughs> you know, he's, you know, he he remains in my life, and we remain in touch. And and I just he's he is like a brother to me. And and you know, I just I can't say enough about him. He's just a wonderful, wonderful man. That is awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the aspect of of mentorship was he your friend before he was your mentor, or was yes. there? Yeah, yes. Yeah. No, for sure. We we were um, we met while working for the same equine practice in Miami, and he was. We were both down in the in the South Florida, working out in the you know the country part of the practice, and and uh, later on they the practice moved us both to the racetrack, and we kind of worked together. We didn't always get along with one another, but we we worked together and. You know, it was one of those things that uh, we just, you know, it, it just worked out that we ended up getting, you know, as time went on, we got closer and closer and just, and turned into this, this French, you know, this amazing friendship before it really, you know, once he got into the acupuncture, uh, then the mentorship started happening too, because he was well ahead of the curve. You know, when it came to integrative medicine, he was doing acupuncture and chiropractics, you know, way, way before most people were even knowledgeable of it. Wow. So, yeah. So, so, so with that, when you said that, you know, Jim said to stick with it, keep going, was that a, like, did you find because back in 1995 or even further back than that, this, the whole idea of chiropractic or the integrative medicines, that was pretty out there for a lot of people so did you find that people were open to it as you were getting into it or did you just have did you have to do a little bit of an educational tour when you were promoting this well it, it was funny it was it was one of those things where uh, the proof was in the pudding you know like i was working at the racetrack at the time and uh and i was just starting to get trained and so like the trainers that i was working for i was like you know like i'm doing this chiropractic do you mind if i you know start working on these horses doing some chiropractics you know, and, you know, let's, and you tell me what you think. And it was one of those deals is like, the more I did, the more they wanted it done. <laughs> and it, and it kind of started steering me away from doing a lot of the routine medicine. I had to have, have other people do, you know, the medical treatments because the chiropractic part of it was becoming at that time, it wasn't, you know, that expensive because I wasn't spending a whole lot of time doing it. But uh, so it was time efficient. I could do, you know, several horses and, 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 uh, and the demand just, you know, just bloomed. Yeah. So, yeah. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So let's chat about you and your wife for a minute. All right. I'd like you to think back about when you first met Margie and the person that you were back then. And then about the person you were when the two of you circled back into each other's lives. What about you was different when the two of you came back together? And how did that help make you ready to receive all that she could bring into your life? Wow. So the first time around, I met Margie when I just got out of vet school. I was working down in Miami. And she was, you know, she was training down there, you know, she was probably the premier trainer for everybody down there. She was, I mean, she was getting on horses day and night. And, and uh, I would be the horse show vet down at Tropical Park. And I'd be sitting there watching this Margie Goldstein getting on this horse, Margie Gold. And she'd get on six, you know, 60 or 70 rides a day. Ooh. While I sat there watching the horse show, I'm like, "How is this even humanly possible?" You know, <laughs> I mean, it was like assembly line. They were all just lined up at the at the in the warm up area, and she would just hop off one onto the next, hop off one, and it just it just went on all day long. She was relentless, you wow. know. And uh, you know, the day would get over, and and a bunch of us would get together, and we'd go have you know something cold to drink, and hang out, and laugh, and and she was there and I was there and we got talking and got to, you know, over time we, we started going out and, and, uh, but 
you know, at the time it was just, you know, both of our schedules was just crazy. You know, I was up at five in the morning and they would, you know, work us until, you know, I mean, we were working probably a hundred hours a week and she's working equally hard on her own. And so that lasted for about three years before we both kind of just, you know, kind of fell back a little bit and, and just exhausted. And, and, um, so I kind of fell out of her, you know, I just kind of walked out of her life, you know, and I went a different route and ended up in, um, involved with somebody else, got married, moved, went through the whole, we went to Texas. I was there for, you know, three years and right when Texas and the oil, you know, industry kind of crashed and my marriage crashed and the business crashed and, and my parenting skills crashed and I mean it was just like you know failure on every level and so and I was fortunate enough to get a job back with the with the practice back in Miami and came back to work for them and get back on my feet and which was struggle and um, it took me it took me a while but Margie was always in the background we had stayed in touch and know talk about horses talking about different things because i had kind of hooked her up with some people uh, you know mainly you know one individual that was shipping horses from europe uh doing the you know the warm bloods coming over from europe which was a brand new thing at that time and uh you know so she got involved with that and we had stayed in touch and then you know somehow the door reopened and we started talking and and you know she, along with her parents, gave me a second chance. And uh, we just, you know, kind of took it slow. <laughs> I, mean, I I took it slow, but, yeah. <laughs> but I took it real slow. But, you know, eventually it, it blossomed into the love we have today. And it just has been an amazing journey with an amazing woman who is just, you know, there's there's nobody like her. You know? So I, I, I looked out. For sure. God, God, I think was looking after me. And I think it was, you know, a God, she was a godsend. I mean, I think because of that, it probably saved me from, you know, from myself. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Yeah. Isn't it funny how life does that to us? I mean, in the moment, it's not funny, but like looking back, how did you recognize the changes in yourself and how did you positively build on them? like as you and Margie, Margie came back together? Well, I think when you, at least for me, when I kind of bottomed out, it also opened the door to my relationship with God again, you know, because mm. I had kind of tucked God back into being my spare tire and reach for him should I need him. And all of a sudden now, I really needed him. And and asked him to actually take the steering wheel instead of being the spare tire and you know you steer the course here and I think it was you know well I mean it was a godsend she was she was a godsend you know and it was that that return to faith and return to God and re and, and realize how grateful I am to be here and to have what I have it's just it's been again quite yeah a yeah that that is an amazing story and and to know that yeah I mean I guess you could look at the big picture and say that you had to to venture on to become someone that would be like able and open to receiving what she had or what the two of you could then share sure. and that she'd be willing to risk everything again you know, to somebody that had hurt her like that, you know, initially. And, yeah. uh, you know, she, she did, she, she forgave me and her, and certainly I'm, I know her parents had to have misgivings and, but I got to say, they, they are amazing. They were amazing people. And, you know, they opened up their arms and said, come on. And, you know, and I am so grateful because, you know, through them, you know, I really got to see what marriage was all about. You know, mm -hmm. They they are 
exactly what how I think God meant marriage to be, their relationship, their treatment of one another, their honesty, their integrity, how they raised their kids. It was it was an honor to be a part of that. For oh. sure. Well, that's great. You know, I've never had the the honor of and the great pleasure of meeting Margie, but I have followed her for years and I am inspired by every gritty ride I see her do it in the ring she is a fireball <laughs> well, yeah i mean and she is her life is inspirational i mean here you know i she is the epitome of the warrior woman you know i mean and i think that's why she, you know everybody just clings to her because she never says quit you know it's it's you know no matter what has happened i mean some of the injuries there have been times that I didn't think she was going to walk away, you know, and, and just, you know, just sickening. And, and she gets up and, you know, brushes herself off. And, and before you know it, she's back on a horse and, you know, never takes back. I mean, she is, you know, you know, she's one of those that fears nothing, attacks everything. And wow. she is just, she is a warrior, and, and that's what I think. What what everybody sees in her, and just you know, aspires to be yep. like that because it's just incredible to see, incredible to be a part of. Nice, nice. That's awesome. Well, you two have a lovely story. Put into words for us what it feels like to witness the miracles that you have seen. And how do you think that has heightened your relationships with the horses you treat? Well, putting that into words is, is an awesome task. I know. <laughs> but, you know, when we talk about these miracles and, and you know, when this kind of approach to therapy, you see miracles almost every day, you know? And some of them are really subtle, you know, where you just have to know that's different. Mm -hmm. And some of them are just jaw dropping, you know, or horses look like they're fracture leg lame and then they're sound, you know, and you just, you haven't, how do you explain that? You know, it's just, you know, total dysfunction to total function in a blink of an eye. And, and, you know, witnessing that is, you know, I feel sorry, you know, that veterinarians, veterinary, on the whole scale of things, very few veterinarians really get to witness that kind of thing. And then the, the part of that, that's the most rewarding is how these animals show their gratitude. You know, that, you know, there's very few people that will ever see a horse show gratitude, but unless you're doing this kind of work where they recognize what you're doing, you know, they you know, they may not be happy about it, but they understand that you're not really there to try to hurt them. You know, even though you're taking them through their body of pain, that they are, you know, going to be relieved from, it. and to see that on their faces and they look at you like, what did you just do? You know, and they, they, they turn around and just they're face to face with you, staring at you kind of going, you know, like just in awe of what just happened. And it's, and then it's all chemical related. I mean, it's, you know, you're releasing these endorphins on massive levels and they are just, you know, they've never felt this before. And it's just amazing. And, um, so yeah, I mean the re the reward of them turning around and sinking sinking their head in your chest and just to say thank you is just it's incredible and it happens almost every day. Yeah, and you just wish you could give that to other veterinarians because I know there are very few that have ever ever experienced that part from these yeah. animals. No, absolutely. And uh, that just sort of slides right into the next question. So 
Tell us about the importance of developing communication with the horse and gaining an understanding that allows a much deeper connection with them. You mentioned how that you love what you do and how it changed your relationship with the horse. Can you expand on that? Well, what, I mean, the biggest thing that doing this kind of work teaches you is patience. You have to be patient. You have to be willing to wait on them. You know, and looking back, I and I was guilty of this, is, you know, and I see, you know, veterinarians, you know, they're always in a rush. They walk in, they walk right past the animal, right to the source of the problem, and they're poking and prodding, and they never take a second to say hello. You know, look at me, smell me. You know, let me touch you. You know, ask permission. You know, and uh, which is, you know, you're walking into the horse's home and taking over, and you know, and you wonder why they resist. <laughs> you know, it's just, yeah. you know, why would you feel somebody walked into your house and, and did the same thing? You know, you, grabbed you, you by know. the shirt and just pulled you yeah, out yeah. and said, yeah, "All right, let's like, go do." This. Like, well, I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. And, uh, so. It, you know, it has taught me that. And so, uh, you know, when I walk in and, and I greet the horse and I take a minute for it to just, you know, touch it and put my hands on it, just let it smell me and, and exchange air and greet them and, you know, just enjoy the bonding of it. And, and, and it's a very simple thing. And then and then I take a second and pray over them. And, and you know, I haven't ever told anybody I do this, but, but I do. I, I just, I ask God for them to ha get have a spirit of, you know, reception where they will, you know, accept what I'm here to give, you know, that I'm here to help, you know, and just say that over them. And then in we go. Well, I have to share this story and, this was in the day that we got to spend together. And I don't know if you remember this or not, but it left a lifetime effect on me. And it's exactly what you just described. We were at this one barn and this one horse that you were about to treat had had a history from a previous, previous owner in Europe of being abused. And this horse was now obviously not abused, doing very well, but he had those qualities of being very internalized and not trusting. And I remember when I first started massaging this horse, it took like four or five sessions for this horse just to exhale and just relax and ear and all this kind of stuff. So we walked towards the horse's stall. I walked into the stall and I greeted the horse and he's like, oh, hey, how's it going? How's it going? And then you walked in. And he immediately like went like right to my head into my chest and just kind of like, okay, who is that? Who is that? And I remember watching you. It was, it, bring, it makes me a little emotional because it was so real. It was, you stood there and you just let this horse find your space and you never reached out to touch him when he wasn't ready. And at one point, he did kind of step into your circle of energy. And I remember you reached out and you touched him and you said to him, see, any friend of Tracy's is a friend of yours. <laughs> Do you remember that? No, I'm sadly, <laughs> but no. But, that's, but thank you for sharing that. I love oh, that. Oh, you're so welcome. And, you know, I'm not surprised you might not be able to remember that because that was like one tiny day, like 20 years ago, but it has left a total effect on me. And I just, I can't tell you how many times I've shared that story, just trying to help people realize that horses have their own space, their own energy. They don't want to be just, you know, grabbed and manhandled. And there's a certain amount of respect that, you know, they have the right to receive. I agree. I agree. You know, and and so seldom they're given it, you know, because you know, after all, they are just an animal. You know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Awesome. 
All right. So how do you recommend people open a dialogue with their horse's healthcare providers in a way that they can understand and not be fearful of? I think owners should seek to, to form a team. I don't think one person can serve all your needs. And I don't think you should just be satisfied with one person's voice. You know, I think a lot of these issues we see with, you know, especially with horses when they can't talk, is that, you know, two eyes are better than one, you know? And, you know, so if you have different people looking at it from different aspects, your horse has a better shot of responding to the therapies that are offered, you know? So, and it's just all about communication. If you have a team that can communicate one with one another about uh, issues that they're, they're, they're perceiving and that this horse is having, you know, how much better is it for that animal, you know, that you work together to, to achieve a common goal. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that would be my advice to owners is just seek the best help that they can find that, and that everybody work together and communicate. Yeah. And I, I think too, like maybe with the massage therapy, because it really is touchy feely. And sometimes too, I mean, the proof is in the pudding and the, the rider will often experience that the next day or the day after, or if the horse has maintenance, you know, it, it eventually totally changes their way of going. But I find, um, that people take a little longer to accept it, probably more so than they do the chiropractic. Do you have any thoughts on different aspects of the body work and how people are accepting them like 20 some odd years later? Yeah, I, you know, cause I think they work so well together. You know, yeah. I think, uh, you know, the body work is so closely, integrated into the chiropractic part of it as we manipulate because a lot of what I do isn't just manipulation you know it's coming to you with a lot of stretching and you know myofascial work and you know all this body work that goes that really needs to be done to make sure that these adjustments will hold longer last longer have a better effect and you know it's we're once you change the spine and you're changing how those muscles are firing and functioning. And so the body work becomes, you know, like that next step, you know, follow up, let's, let's get this, you know, and, and so the healing is, you know, rapidly advanced when you have these modalities working together, you know, and again, I don't think there's anyone stop shopping here. I think, Mm -hmm. You need, you know, multiple people working, you know, especially if you're having, you know, like postural issues with your horses where they can't, you know, they can't turn one direction, can't bend another, you know, they're not coming up through their back and, you know, are they going to be sore? Absolutely, they're going to be sore. But, you know, is just uh, massage therapy going to be effective? No. You know, is just chiropractic therapy going to be effective? No. Is yeah. just medical therapy going to be effective? No. You know, you just, you need it all, you know, yeah. when you have these athletes working at, you know, operating at that, that upper echelon, especially, and, you know, you know, for me, it's mostly jumpers. So, you know, as the jumps get higher, you know, the demands become, you know, much more demanding. So, it, it, you know, you really do need help for sure. Well, and just to touch on actually something that you said a little while ago about, you know, the relationships that you have with these horses and the, the way they express their thanks to you and things. And I, I think that's the part that maybe in, in the aspect of miracles and communications and stuff that is so hard to express or explain to people. Like when you've finished a treatment and you have felt this horse have a huge shift in energy and their physicality and you you can physically like you can feel and see their thanks to you doesn't that isn't that hard to explain 
to your quote unquote average horse owner who might not look at their horse in that such a way or ever had that feeling with them themselves? Well, unfortunately, I seldom have horse owners present. <laughs> it's, usually, <laughs> it's usually the grooms and usually the trainers that are present and, you know, that uh, they see, they see this, you know, and they're, they are, you know, it, it, it's, it's incredible. You'll, you know, I'll be standing out talking to somebody and, you know, one of the trainers will be walking by with a horse that, that I know. And also the horse will be just like, you know, veer, veer off and, and come and say hello. And they're just like, can you believe this? I was like, yeah, actually I can. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it is, it's the relationships that you develop through, you know, this kind of medicine. And it's just, yeah. life it is life changing oh, for sure. It so is. And I mean, I know I've had so many clients over the years and there's been a few most recently where I've been brought into the, the fold because they have a sore back, but the work that I'm doing with them, I know that they're, that it's just, there's so much more involved than just that back and that pony or that horse is just completely letting go of more attention. It, it affects their mind it, it everything. And it's just trying to explain how I felt that I've helped them is challenging because by talking a lot of that woo woo energy stuff to people that might not get it is a little hard to do but I walk away knowing that I think I've changed that horse's life for the better for the day you're gonna have to come down and ride around with me some more because I've got some you know more techniques to to exchange with you and and I think you would have a lot of fun with but but they do become daredevil techniques because oh. these, animals, <laughs> these animals do respond wildly wow. good when is, you're doing this stuff so, is that yeah, daredevil gonna, technique how you broke your ankle oh <laughs> uh, that, that one i won't i won't share with you because okay. i'll keep you i'll keep it on the ground because i was actually working from on top of the boxes when that happened okay and, and but i got to share this because it was an incredible event you know and and i you, I don't see this very often, but these, it was a horse who had twisted his spine, you know, and he was a young horse and it was just locked up and, and lame. And, but I think the lameness may have contributed to the twisting of the spine. So, so, but these horses that twist like that, usually, you know, when we see it in jumpers, you know, they're, they're interesting cases and in it happens acutely. You know, it'd be a horse that'll be jumping meter 50, you know, and just, you know, scopey and can no problem jumping. And something will happen during that class. And the next day they can't jump. They're not lame. You know, if you jog them in hand, they are sound. They do everything right. But they can't jump over a cavaletti. They wow. cannot come up off the ground. And, you know, and once they release, it is so powerful. It is almost, the only thing I can liken it to is like having a garage door spring, all of a sudden let go, you know, <laughs> and it's that much energy involved. Wow. And, it, and it, all it is is just rocking it back and forth until it just releases. And, and almost every single one of these horses that I've, you know, seen this in, they've all four legs come off the ground. And wow. they just fling themselves up in the air as this energy is released. And it's the most awesome cool. thing. You've ever seen. <laughs> and, and that's what happened with this horse was, and I knew it was coming, you know, I'm like, and I'm telling the groom, watch out, because this is going to be violent. And I'm just rocking it back and forth. And all of a sudden it let go. But instead of flipping over, it flipped like a helicopter going down. And it went this way. And it just, it flipped right into me and slammed us both into the wall, you know, oh, and, you know, it was me first, him, <laughs> him, him next. And then we both, just, you know, slid down the wall. Ooh. It was, I mean, it was so energetic, and, but uh, not a happy ending for me, but, yeah. but, but at least, at least I cushioned his fall and he was not hurt, you know, exactly. so, Wow. Yeah. No, I remember you showed me a couple of motion palpation things. I still do. 
I still do. Yeah. So I would love to come hang out with you some yeah, more. Come, come, because you know, you know, I'm I'm getting toward the that end of the yardstick of, <laughs> of life here as far as a practitioner goes. But so yeah, come, you know, because we'll have so much fun and I got so much to show you and, and so much to share. So ah, cool. Please. See, that would be great. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So talking about, you know you getting to the end of that practitioner stage and like the way <laughs> you have wrestling with horses still. Self-care is something we all need to incorporate in our daily lives. How do you make sure that your needs are being met when you have long, busy and active and busy days and seasons, et cetera? Well, I mean, there's several aspects to that, you know, and, you know, one is certainly spiritual for me is that, there's there's so much depletion and it's, like you say so much energy taken away from you and, and it's it's easy to get spiritually separated from you know that part of you and so uh, you know i get up a little earlier every morning and i get up and spend you know time in you know bible study and a little devotional and a little bit of prayer you know and get and it just sets me up for the day you know, and it gets me centered on, on what's important and, and, you know, and get away from all the, the self-ish part of life and into, you know, centered on me and who I am. And, you know, then the other thing is the physical part of it. And, and the way I practice manipulative medicine and chiropractic is, you know, it's very physical. And so it's, you know, and during this time of the year, usually it's, it's, you know, eight hours a day and it's, you know, seven days a week and, and exhausting. And, and so it's, you know, we, you know, we have Margie and I both take advantage of, a, we get a physiotherapist that comes and works on us on a weekly basis. And that's, that's just a saving grace, you know, yeah. and, you know, because we need, you know, we give it to their bodies. We need it for our bodies because we are, we abuse them to way beyond what they're meant to, what to experience. Yeah. And so the, and we keep the physical therapist pretty busy. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he's, he has been, he's again, another godsend for us. You know, he's been great and he comes when we're needed, you know, and he's needed me. You know, he takes the time on us both. And, and that's, that's really a, you know, a good, he keeps us kind of monitored of, of, you know, where our physical well-being is, you know, and then, you know, then the dietary part of it is, you know, we're very conscious of our diets and, and what we put into our bodies. And, and so we've, you know, kind of taken the extra step to uh, eat well, cook well, but we still do a lot of takeout too. So <laughs> well, after you know, long days, I'm sure, just, you know, the time is, you know, but, Again, we try and when, even with our takeout, we try and eat well and you know eat healthy. Yeah. It's the big thing. And so it's uh, you know it you know there's all these different aspects to your health that you have to take care of, and, and you know the nutritional part is I think just as important as the physical part, and and for me the spiritual part is the most important. You know. Wow. Um, how many horses can you tend to in a day? Well, at, at this point in time in, uh, in my life, I, you know, I, like five a day is about my comfort range, you know, yeah. and I, you know, I do five and because I spend probably, you know, horses that are routinely worked on, you know, it still takes about not maybe not quite an hour, you know, and then, but if I see a horse for the first time, it could take, you know, two hours, you know, by the time you get through it all, you know, um, you know, trying to evaluate their movement and then, you know, getting them to accept, you know, like, you know, and the first time you walk into a horse's stall, the only thing answer they have for you is no, you know, you know, turn this way. No, mm -hmm. do this. No, <laughs> you know, they just, they just, no, that's their answer. Yeah. And so it takes a little bit of, you know, that first time takes time. You know, you just, there's no, you know, way around it. But the second time you come back, they're like, I got this. 
you know, yeah. can you do this? Look at this, you know, and then, can you do this? Look at me, you know, and they're like showing off, you know, like <laughs> I got, well, I know what you want, you know, and then all of a sudden they're like ahead of you and you're gonna like, wait, wait, yeah. we're still on this side. You got to come with me this way. <laughs> you know? oh, uh, it's goodness. hysterical. You just see these horses that you work on. I walk, work on routinely and I walk in the stall and the first thing they do is like, look at me then. You know, and they'll just <laughs> turn around to their side like, you know, good, how good, see ya, you know, but it's, it, it is, it, it's incredible. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, but five is about for me too. I find, you know, I can do six, but five is, is comfortable. It's probably leads me to having my best day. Um, but I would totally agree. It's the, how I manage my energy mentally, emotionally, um, I find is a lot of what I'm, I use to help prep myself now. Um, and yes, physically is a big thing, you know, working out and staying strong and eating well. And there's so many aspects to people in the healthcare field. I will, I will generalize it by saying that, that I think because we give so much of ourselves um, to what we do out of service, because we love it, that sometimes it's so easy for us to deplete ourselves. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, that's a given. I mean, I have I, I, I'm not good at, at finding balance in my life because I'm so, you know, passionate about doing this. And it's just so like, you know, it's, I can't wait to do it again. You know, it's just, yeah. you know, it's just the way my wife is with competing. She just is, you know, just like, that's, that's her focus. That's her thing. And just, you know, we're both the same way about that. It's like, we, we've let these things kind of, you know, be the runaway train and, and we love it. You know, so it's, <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So what's in the next chapter in the book of Dr. Steve Engel? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping <laughs> that I will return to full work again and, and uh, be back to working on horses. I just, I, you know, I, I've thought about that. You know, someone's asked me, you know, they've asked me about retirement and that kind of thing. I'm like, you know, I really don't want to stop working on horses. You know, if, if it's just a couple a day, I want to continue because I yeah. get such, you know, joy from doing it. And, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, the approach is a little bit unique as compared to, to the, to most. And, uh, you know, I share what I can, but, you know, I, you know, People are, you know, like, like you, like you said, everybody's too busy to, you know, take a minute and, and get involved, but it's okay. I, yeah. you know, I've, I've had, I've had a blast doing this and, and I've seen extraordinary things. So. Well, I'm sure you've affected many people such as myself. Um, Wonderful to hear. And I am so glad to have made a difference. You know, I mean, that's, if there's, I hope that's the epitaph <laughs> that oh. I, that I have on my tombstone. Is oh. that he made a difference. You yes. Know? Well, you yeah. definitely did. And, and I know when I, I got you in the back of my mind that I'd love to have you on as a guest. So when I heard back from you, I was just so thrilled and I've been so excited about this conversation. So yes, I'm going to take you up on that invite to Florida at some point in time, maybe next year. Yeah. Please, yeah, come. Okay. Go. Whenever you can. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> well, thank you, Steve, for your time and your stories and just sharing your heart and your passion for what you do and uh, the lovely story about you and Margie. Maybe I'll get a chance to meet her too. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be fabulous. And you know, maybe Traverse City is close, closer for you. You should come to Traverse City. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, yeah, because we're there almost all summer long from June until through September, you know, so, okay. you know, that, that's not such a far travel for you. That is not. <laughs> awesome. Then you Thank consider. you. I will right. definitely do that. Let's stay in touch. That would be beautiful. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All right.